Many people with an OLED are rightfully worried about images sticking around. There are hundreds of these threads online. The good news is that you can usually fix this just by running a short compensation cycle built into every OLED TV. The bad news is that this feature doesn't always run when it's supposed to. Or there's no way to run it when you need to. For such a core part of how OLEDs work, we found a lot of buggy implementations. In fact, this meant that we were wrong in our last video when we mentioned that Sony OLED TVs have more image retention. It's a temporary artifact of the TFT layer, rather than a permanent degradation of the OLED layer. In this video, we'll discuss the nature of OLED image retention and what automatic functions a TV has to mitigate it. We'll also explore how buggy implementation can aggravate image retention and discuss these findings' impact on our longevity test. Hi, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where for the past nine months we've been running a hundred TVs to the ground to fast-track their demise. We're gathering data on when, how, and why they break so we can pass our knowledge on to you. Our last update from this test was March 21st, so it's been a while. But in that time, we've had quite a few happenings. So let's start where we left off. The last time we touched base, the Samsung S95B experienced a power supply failure. The day after we published the last update video, the TV was back on the test and running CNN as it should, and hasn't had any problems since. About a month later, on April 26, the Samsung QN900A 8K QLED stopped turning on. Pretty quickly, we discovered it suffered from a motherboard failure. Thankfully, Pascal could replace it, so once the part came in, we repaired it and put it back on the test as of May 23rd. While waiting for the motherboard to arrive on the QN900A, Somebody bricked the LG 27 GR95 QE B monitor by going into the forbidden areas of the service menu. The monitor only needed a motherboard replacement, but we had to purchase a whole new monitor as you can't just buy the motherboard separately. After swapping the motherboards, the monitor was back on the test as of May 25th, only missing a week of playing CNN. Maybe this certain somebody will brick all the displays so they'll all stop playing CNN for a week. But for those who don't remember, we placed three OLED monitors on our test. The Dell Alienware AW3423DWF, the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8, and the aforementioned LG 27GR95QE-B. These are popular OLED monitors, so we just wanted to see how they handle things like image retention and burn-in compared to TVs, especially since computer monitors often have many static, bright elements on the screen. In addition to the two monitors, we've also added two 2023 TV models to the test, the LG G3 and the Samsung S95C. The S95C was added as of March 30th and currently has four months of data, so we're well on our way to finding out if the 2023 QD OLED models are twice as reliable as the previous generation, as was claimed by Samsung. The LG G3 was added to the test a little bit later, on June 7th. We're interested in its new MLA layer and how it impacts the OLED's longevity. Finally, we've had to retire two TVs from the test permanently. The Sony A80K began its slow descent into malfunction on April 28th, when it started to show a line of dead green subpixels. We had another TV do that, the LG G2. The G2 continues to run on the test, even though the malfunction persists and has since devolved. It now displays more wonky subpixel lines, and the wonky lines even appear when those subpixels should be off. The A80K, well... After a week, the A80K ceased to turn on beyond a boot loop of the Google TV logo. Now, even though Pascal is the best TV surgeon since Hawkeye Pierce, he couldn't save the TV as the issue was in the panel itself, meaning the only way to replace it was to buy a whole new TV. As of May 11th, the Sony A80K was retired from the test permanently, and we won't provide further updates for this model. You might remember the Sony X95J was experiencing some weird uniformity issues in the opening months of the test. Well, we're happy to report that it stopped doing that, because it's dead now. As of July 9th, the Sony X95J was permanently retired from the test, so we won't provide further updates for this model either. And to briefly explain what happened, uh... Oh yeah, this is gonna be a major disassembly. the LEDs are all no, this will be nasty. It's a... Clips in and it's never. Oh. Yeah. We're able to open it. We do 
that's the easiest way to make that call. Okay. No, the panel, the panel is okay. It's done. No attempt. Okay. This is good. Oh, wow. One last noteworthy notable is the CNN logo change. We've been using CNN as our go-to TV killer since 2017, so it's uh, kind of rude of them to change it partway through our test like this. But this change doesn't impact our results too much. It basically means we can't directly compare the results or data collected in this test to our previous burn-in test with the LG C7s. And the newly added S95C and G3 aren't as comparable since they spent less time with the old logo. Now, to start with the juicy stuff. Image retention is normal for any OLED TV. It's quick to appear, and there are built-in ways to get rid of it. The two main types of temporary image retention are caused by temperature, or TFT threshold voltage shift. Let's talk about the first one. Temporary image retention caused by heat is the quickest type of image retention to appear. It can appear on screen after just a few minutes. Basically, the TV's heat distribution can impact the amount of light the OLED pixels emit. And to fix it? Yeah, you just turn the unit off, let it cool down, and the image retention clears up. But it isn't always that easy. The other type, TFT threshold voltage shift, or for the sake of my sanity, TFT-related image retention, is a lot more dependent on the TV's internal functions and downtime. Within the OLED panel is a thin film transistor layer, or TFT layer. This layer drives the OLED subpixels, turning them on and off. Sometimes they can drift, resulting in image retention. It's normal and happens no matter what content you watch or how long you watch it. That's what's happening inside, but what you see on the screen is this. As the characteristics of the TFT layer drift, images remain on the screen. It can take as little as one hour of on time running with static elements for this type of image retention to set in. But over time, the image retention accumulates. Each OLED TV has a built-in feature commonly referred to as a short compensation cycle. Depending on your brand, it'll be called something else, like a pixel refresher, or pixel cleaner, or a panel calibration cycle, or screen optimization. When we say short compensation cycle, that's what we mean. And to pause for a second on the terminology, we call these short compensation cycles because of what they're intended to do and the duration it takes to do it. These cycles run when the TV is off and last under 10 minutes. They detect and compensate for changes in the TFT layer's electrical characteristics and return it to a baseline state. To see how impactful the short compensation cycle is, we took a 42-inch Sony A90K we had just lying around and subjected it to a CNN stream with a static overlay of our logo and some colorful squares without any off time for 120 hours. This was an even more torturous test than our standard torture test. During that time, the CNN stream froze on Kevin O'Leary, leaving us with this Rickroll-looking image stuck on the screen. It looks terrible. It is terrible. But after one short compensation cycle, the text, Kevin, and the ticker bar at the bottom are all gone. We ran a few more short compensation cycles, but found that all it took was one to remove most, if not all, of the TFT-related image retention. After that, you'll see diminishing returns. It seems like these short compensation cycles are pretty important, except that just running a compensation cycle isn't that straightforward. This is the land of TVs, after all. If they were straightforward, we wouldn't exist. As mentioned, TVs are supposed to run the cycles automatically, but when do they actually do it? For such a core part of how OLEDs work, we've found a lot of buggy implementations, which can result in more image retention appearing on your screen. And if you wanted to manually run this feature to clear up retention, it often isn't available. To find out which TVs run compensation cycles and when, we measured the power consumption of each TV. Since the TVs draw power during this cycle, and the cycle itself only lasts a few minutes, you can track if and when the cycles run. Here we have the LG C2's power consumption graph in testing conditions. You can see the big zigzags as it's displaying content, and then you see the plummet in consumption when the TV turns off. Almost instantly, there's a little plateau. This is the short compensation cycle running, and it runs right when the TV turns off, though you'll need to accumulate at least four hours of watch time before it's triggered. 
So even if you watch or game in short bursts of an hour or two at a time, once you've reached a total of four cumulative, not consecutive, hours, it'll run one of these cycles. And this is true of all LG models, including the LG 27GR95QE-B monitor. Now, this is a good thing. A really good thing. Because that means you end up with less TFT-related image retention, since it only has four hours to accumulate. LG is consistent with this implementation, making it easier to trust that your OLED is running the automatic functions as it's supposed to. And it's aligned with the information found online from LG. But if for some reason you don't think your LG is running the cycle automatically, you can manually trigger it on the newer models. If you have a 2022 model or newer, you can manually trigger this cycle by going into the general settings menu, going to OLED care, and selecting the pixel clean function. You'll see a few prompts, but after about eight minutes, the TV will reboot and you're all set. The one exception is the LG B2. Moving on to Samsung. Samsung claims that their OLEDs are expected to run their short compensation cycles just like the LGs, right when they've been shut off after four hours of cumulative usage. But this is only true of the Samsung S95B and the Odyssey OLED G8, as shown here with their graphs. It's a good thing for those OLEDs, but the thorn in the side comes with the S95C. The newly added S95C doesn't seem to run them consistently, or really at all. Just how and when they're triggered is a mystery. We even toyed around with different settings, but none of them could force a compensation cycle, except for the one time we ran it with an internal streaming app and used a remote to turn it off instead of our fancy HDMI CEC divine master of 100 TV setup but we couldn't repeat that. We also managed to trigger the short compensation cycle by unplugging the TV and plugging it back in. It appears as though this might be a fix for the lack of a manual cycle option in the settings menu, since the pop-up appears after the TV has accumulated four hours of on time. The S95C's buggy implementation of these short compensation cycles means you can't rely on it to automatically run as it should. And that's a pretty big problem when there isn't a method of manually triggering the screen optimization, as Samsung calls it. So you may have images stuck on your screen that aren't actually permanently stuck there. You can remove them with a feature within the TV itself, but you just can't access it. I don't know about you, but this seems like an oversight. Manual cycles should be accessible to users, just as they are on the newer LG models. And not just that, but we think manufacturers should be much more upfront about the image retention prevention features in their TVs and what they can do in general. And with that segue, we would like to introduce you to Sony, the master of inconsistency. At least in this context, please don't sue us. The inconsistencies across Sony OLEDs start at the research phase. I mean, if you're trying to figure out when they're advertised to run the short compensation cycles, good luck. It ranges from four hours to a few hours to six hours and more. So when indeed? Of course, with information like that, there's only one thing to do, test. We hooked up our Sony models to track when they ran the short compensation cycles. What we found was enlightening. It turns out the information wasn't the only inconsistent thing, though I guess that means the information is accurate if you think about it. There were clear patterns based on the OLED series. The K-series models we tested, the A90K and A95K, run their short compensation cycles after 5 hours and 45 minutes. Now, that might fall outside of what you'd consider a few hours, and it's certainly more than four, but it does run the cycle eventually and consistently, which is great for you at home since you can depend on the TV to run the cycle, just as long as you turn it off long enough. The J-series models, the A80J and A90J, were a little more interesting. As you can see, they basically flatline. There's a little blip at the three hour mark, but this is not a compensation cycle as we confirm the presence of image retention before and after this power spike, indicating that no cycle was had. Now, this couldn't be fully true, otherwise Reddit would be full of Sony OLEDs with haunted screens. So we had one of our colleagues test his 77 inch A80J at home and Fortunately for him, his TV ran this short compensation cycle after six and a half hours of off time. Again, this is a little outside the few hour range advertised, but I mean, they did say or more. Our best guess for this discrepancy is some buggy implementation that doesn't play too nicely with HDMI CEC. The compensation cycles seem to work fine when you turn the TV off with a remote control, albeit much later than four hours. 
Finally, we have the oldest model of the bunch, the Sony A8H. The A8H behaves differently from the other Sonys because it consistently runs the short compensation cycle after four hours of off time. Good for it. But why is there a delay in the first place? A four to six and a half hour delay surely must impact a household with, let's say, multiple family members or housemates with different schedules. As a fun aside, we were fortunate enough to ask Sony about this delay. They responded that the delay was because of the click sound the TV makes when it runs the cycle, and that some people find this disruptive. I don't know about you, but I might find it more unsettling to hear a click hours after my TV's been turned off, but I mean, I get it. Perhaps the bigger question is what impact does the delay have? What happens if you're in a situation where your TV isn't off long enough to run the compensation cycle? Well, to answer that, we only had to look as far as our inventory. You might recall we had to rejig our test schedule to give the Sony OLEDs more time to run these compensation cycles. We left a five hour block on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, assuming this would be long enough. Even more time than necessary. At least now we know why, even after this schedule change, most of the Sony OLEDs just kept looking worse and worse month after month. Some of them just didn't have enough time to run the short compensation cycles. When we add our most recent data from month eight, well, now they're a little more comparable. That's because we now manually trigger a compensation cycle on the affected Sony OLEDs before taking a photo. Unlike Samsung, you can manually trigger a short compensation cycle on a Sony OLED. Just isn't very intuitive, like at all, so we'll show you how to do it. First, if you have your TV calibrated or your settings customized, take a photo or write those values down as this process will reset them. Go into the settings menu by pressing the gear on the remote. Once in the settings menu, Go into the system settings and scroll all the way to the bottom to find retail mode settings. In that menu, go to picture reset mode and toggle the setting on. Turn off the TV using the remote control, unplug the TV and plug it back in. When you turn the TV back on, you should see a pop-up asking if you want to run a panel calibration cycle. It will advise you that this takes a few minutes. Press yes and there you go. Let it run for a few minutes. You'll hear the click and the screen will remain black. The TV will turn back on after running the cycle, and you can see how much retention is cleared up. This means that our month eight photos are more representative of the actual state of the OLED panels than the previous months, where we had heavy TFT-related image retention accumulated on the screen. Our previous update video mentioned that this may be early onset burn-in, but we were wrong in that assertion. We didn't know enough about the nature and characteristics of image retention on OLEDs to be able to make that claim. You might be wondering, okay, yeah, the month eight photos look better than the previous months, but there's still some leftover ticker box and CNN logo. Why didn't those clear up? That's because it isn't TFT related image retention. That is a completely different type of image retention that has nothing to do with short compensation cycles, TFT layers, temperature, and TV downtime. And it isn't exactly temporary either. We'll have more information for you in the coming weeks as Pascal is cooking something up in the lab. Yes, it's, it's OLED panels. He's cooking OLED panels. But with the point to further investigate the nature of electroluminescent layer degradation or permanent burn-in. So stay tuned. Whew. Well, that was a long time to talk about short cycles. I mean, it was a long time since we put a video out to begin with. So thank you to our fabulous subscribers who remained subscribed while we took our time with this. If you're new here, don't hesitate to hit that like and subscribe button, and don't hesitate to leave a comment below. If you're interested in further reading about our longevity test, we have links to articles in the description below, and while you're on the site, why not check out our careers page? You can see all the shenanigans we get up to here from fun bi-weekly team nights to, of course, redefining the nature of consumer tech testing. We're always looking for new members to join our team. Until next time, which hopefully won't be six months from now, I'm Abby from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs.